What's going on guys? Welcome back to Turner Fishing. This is Steven Turner. So, you know, Christmas just passes a brand new year. A lot of people just got live scoop. So we're not out here with your uncle, Uncle Jimbo out there with the cane pole and the minna and that's all we need. Today we're going to be deep diving, explaining everything you need to know about your forward facing sonar. And if you're an advanced user, you still may learn something, but this is going to be broke down into a beginner-friendly version. So the next time you're out on the water, you can put more fish in your boat. So let's break it down. But before we begin, thump that like button for me. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss anything. And let me teach you how to use the live scope. <laughs> hey, I think four bass right there. Yeah, that's pretty hard. That one, that's a big one. About five, six pounder. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, one of the most critical parts about owning live scope and all this is your initial settings before you actually get out onto the water. Now, what I mean by that is you can set a lot of stuff when you first install it or if it's on your boat right now before you even get out there that will help you tune as you get out there because I'm gonna say this throughout the video is every day on the water is not gonna be the same you may set your gain to 75 one day and the picture look amazing and the next day you have to go all the way back down to 55 it just depends on the clarity of your body of water that you're fishing the depth that you're fishing and what you want to do with your forward facing sonar for that day. We're gonna go over our settings first and foremost, but before we dive into that, I want to thank today's sponsor for this video and that is Waterlands Fishing. If you haven't heard about Waterlands Fishing, it is an amazing fishing sunglass company. Uh, you can actually save 10% off your order using code Turner Fishing. And I mean, it's just a, a great team of guys. I mean, a bunch like if you've got live scope and you're not wearing Waterlands, you're missing out on really, really good clarity when the sun is shining. So check them out. Link in the description. I mean, you've got the likes of the live scope master, Josh Jones and Ben Milliken. I mean, these are just two live scope experts and they believe in the brand as do I. But, all right, let's get into the settings. So, luckily, when I first bought my live scope, I have a video out on it. I made my live scope portable. One, because, you know, I, I go fishing with a lot of buddies and they don't have live scope. So, I want, you know, want, once you use it, you want to use it more. That's just the dust of it. And two, I go out on a lot of trips where I'm teaching people how to fish and using live scope is very very easy to learn them what the jigs doing under the water how our jigs are doing under the water for one thing and to locate fish anywhere i go in the world so it was a, a, a really good choice for me now let's go over settings and then we're going to get into should you have it on the pole or should you have it on your trolling motor i keep this as steady as i can you got the light right here but can't really see the numbers too well so first and foremost this is basically your live scope screen all right now if you update your system you're gonna have this is gonna be a little bit more straight i haven't updated my system so that's one thing but this right here your first one Right here on the on the, the first option you have this is going to be how far you want your screen to show that you're fishing or looking around so when you add this up you see the numbers at the top they get bigger and the more you have it out the less clear of an image you have but you're able to find brush piles and locate fish out now the maximum I say I am comfortable fishing this is about 75 foot. So at 75 feet I can see a brush pile and if I'm bass fishing that's normally what I keep it at because I'm looking around trying to find bass. Crappy fishing, I like to locate the structure with it at 75 foot and then 
tone it back down once I get closer to the structure and actually fish it. Now the second option is your gain. Your gain is what's going to make your screen clearer or it's going to make your screen, you know, per or dirtier, but you're, you're able to see your jig better. I mean, having a dirty screen, guys, isn't like that much of a deal breaker. There's some days where my whole screen will be orange, but I'm able to see my jig out at 50 to 45 foot, feet. And I mean, I'm using a 164 ounce jig head when I'm casting that far. So it, it works really good. Now, the most critical thing to me right here is how far down and how far shallow you actually go. Normally, I try to keep mine on 20 foot. And I leave it at 20 foot unless I have to change it. If I'm fishing 20 foot to zero foot, it's going to be on 20 foot. Now, if I start fishing a brush pile that is 30 to 35 foot at the top of it, or where the fish are located, I'll actually bump it up to that depth. But until then, 20 foot lets me know how big the fish is at all times because I'm used to seeing the fish. And after you catch so many of the fish that you see, you start to understand, well, hey, that's a pound and a half, or hey, that's a two pounder. Hey, that's just, you know, a nine, eight inches. So basically figure out whatever depth you want it to go down. Because that's going to change this one. Okay, that's the, <clears throat> the gist of this screen. You've got how far out you are and how deep you are. And your gain lets you see things clearer. Or you can see things more detailed but a little bit of clutter. Which, I mean, throughout this whole segment, I've put pictures and little video segments of stuff on the screen. Hopefully I explained that pretty well. So the next step you want to do is go into your menu. So in this screen, you want to go to Sonar Setup. So I we're going to start on the right side and go to the left side. I keep my noise reject either on medium or low, depending on if the water's muddy or, you know, it, like it, that, this setting can change, you know, depending on the type of day you're on. I like to keep mine on medium because normally we fished fish in the river and yes my GPS is right there so I like to keep mine on medium go back now my appearance I like to use amber and the crappy man likes to use the which one is it the midnight no he uses the blue one but I like to keep it just amber on mine. It's what I started with and that's what I'm used to. Color gain. Another important one. If you can't find your jig, start turning your color gain up. I keep mine from 58 and I, I even bump it all the way up to 80 sometimes. I didn't even know mine was that low. I'm actually going to bump it up now to about 75. get it on there send me set there we go 76 but basically your color gain is gonna just brighten your screen and make everything a lot easier to see trails i do not like trails trails basically kind of give you tracks of your jig in the water grid overlay i like the grid overlay but i don't like it at the same time grid overlay once when you're first starting you can count the boxes so i'm gonna turn it on so we'll show the grid overlay we'll go back basically you get these boxes so one two three three boxes right there will be 20 foot but as you do this it changes as you go uh closer it changes and i don't like that if they would stay the same box, I would enjoy it, but they don't. But basically, if you keep yours at, say, it's at 35 foot right now, forward, and you count one, two, three, four, five, my, my ACC stick is 13 foot. So I know if the fish is in these five boxes, 
I can target them. I'm close enough to hit them, if that makes sense. But now that I'm used to it, I don't really enjoy it on. So, appearance, grid overlay off. I don't use bottom fill because there are fish on the bottom that I like. And stroll history, don't really care for that either. Uh, T, 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 time varying gain. Normally I keep mine off. Uh, if I'm starting to get the ghost tree really bad, I will turn it on low. But normally I don't have that. And that's my installation settings if y'all are curious. But that's pretty much uh, the settings for it. There's pretty much my settings on my unit. I have the Garmin Echo Strike 7. It's the smallest unit you can get and also the cheapest. So with the total package from Bass Tank, I think it was around $1,900. But now we're going to talk about the actual transducer and we'll get to, you know, how to find your jig. And the biggest questions that anybody asks, should it be on a pole mount or on a trolling motor? The most simple question, the most simple answer I can give you is how do you plan on fishing? And what I mean by that is, do you have spot lock? If you have spot lock and you like spot lock on brushes, get a pole. Do you, you know, in my case, I, my, my trolling motor don't have nothing. It's just a trolling motor. I want a pole. Do you target open water fish? Do you chase open water fish? Put on your trolling motor. Easiest explanation I can give you. The pole lets you focus on a target. Your trolling motor lets you fish hands free. It's pretty much the gist of it. This is what makes everything work. This is your forward facing transducer. I have it on a Minn, a Minn Kota hand controlled trolling motor mount. I drilled it out with a Dremel put a PVC pipe in it and I also have a three-fourth PVC pipe in the middle of this so it's able to freely spin and this pole stays still so I can troll around with it and it's not going to bend as bad now the reason I did this mount is because you know mostly fishing out of aluminum boats you can hang this over the side and clamp it up now when I fish with my buddy Brian I take a wash rag with me because he has uh, a classic tracker and the first time i took it i messed this paint job up so i put a wash rag on the side of the boat and tighten it down on that so it doesn't leave the little ring marks and then for the handle it's, it's a weed eater that goes on a weed eater that's what i do for the handle but i'm going to change this very soon because the bass season is coming up and I want something a lot taller that I can turn while I'm standing and fishing. But let's talk about this transducer. So how do you find your jig? You know, you're going around, you're spinning this. I know this really isn't the best example, but it's the best one I can give without actually being on the water. And y'all know my situation with that right now. So this thing shoots out a cone. Now, I want to say it's a 20 degree cone. If I'm wrong about that, I'm sorry, but it, it's a certain degree of cone that this thing is shooting out. So, as you have it on your boat, if I have, say, I'm looking at it like this, the transducer is actually over here. So, when I put my jig in the water, if I put it straight here, it's going to be very lightly detailed. If I put it here, the brighter the image on whatever you're fishing. If you're fishing like a crappy or bass or whatever, and you turn it, and it, the more bright it gets, and then it starts to go dim. You go back, you go bright, dim, bright, dim, bright. You want the brightest return because that's exactly where that fish is sitting. That's exactly where your jig is sitting. So you make the brightest image. So you flip your jig out. 
and I'm gonna hold it. You know, I'm in the boat way back here, but it's right here, and I'm gonna take my transducer and spin it ever so slightly until I get the brightest return. And that's when you drop on the fish. I want to find my jig and then drop. That way I know it's going directly to the fish. Now, if you, if you put your jig out there and let's say, you know, I'm using my, change the camera angle real quick. Let's say I'm using my uh, ACC crab sticks, a 13 footer. I know I bring that one up a lot. It's just, I, I really like that pole. It's, it's really light and man, it's got a backbone to it like no other. But sometimes I take out about 20 foot and I can actually like a fly rod, throw it out there. And the reason I do that is because I want it to pendulum past the fish. And if you throw it out there and you do not see your jig and when you move it and you're past like 15 to 20 foot and it disappears. There's two scenarios that make this happen. Hang on, I'm almost out of breath. Think I'm getting sick. There's two scenarios that is happening. A, you've got current in your water and you're not realizing it and you're using too small of a jig for the obstacle. There's a reason that people put a split shot or peg a weight and put a 1 8 ounce uh, sinker up there or however many ounce sinker you want. That's because we want the jig to go straight down. But I want me, you know, crappy man jigs, we like smaller profile baits. That's our thing. Finesse fishing. Finesse fishing catch a big fish. Believe it or not, go check the channel out if you don't believe me because we got some heels on there. But I want the jig to go straight down. If there's current in the water, it's going to, you, you toss it out there, the jig's going to go this way. And you're like, oh man, I can't find my jig. The live scope's not working. That's number one scenario. Number two scenario, you got your gain too low and it's not able to pick it up way out there. When I tell you that I can take a swim jig, a bass swim jig, I don't even know if I got anything. Hang on. See how that is? <laughs> But when I tell you, you can go 75 foot out on your, you take the first option I was talking about, put it out 75 foot and you can cast a swim jig or this is a vibrating jig and I'm able to see my lure. That's when you got to dial it in. You got to turn your gain up to see it. You can't have a beautiful screen of just a black background and a jig all the time. It's not going to work. I hate to break it to you. It's just not going to work. You're going to have a full orange black screen just looking all crazy. But you're going to catch some fish. Ain't that the most important part? You see a big old blob on there and you're just going to catch some fish. And that's what Live Scope's about. You're catching, not fishing. You're out there playing a video game, is what all these other people say. No, I'm kidding about that. I mean, Live Scope takes skill. People think you just plug it in and go. What's your reality? You do. But if you don't take the steps that I've explained in this video to set it up and actually be able to find your jig, you're not going anywhere with it. You just, you're going to go out there and you're going to get frustrated because all these fish are going to come up and not bite your lure. And you're not going to know that it's just a bait fish. If you don't understand how big the fish is, it takes time on the water. If I throw it out there, I've got a 132 ounce jig head with a little minnow on it. Like, if this is the same size as a fish on the screen, I don't want to catch that. that that's a, a little minnow. <laughs> but hopefully I've enlightened you about my settings. Hopefully I've enlightened you about how to find your jig. Hope you enjoyed the video. I got more content coming down in the future. As soon as I can get a ride, I mean, I'm going to blow up everything about everything. 
when I tell you I'm searching for two pounders, I'm telling you I'm searching for two pounders as soon as I can get on the, out on the lake in my own boat. And when I tell you all the bass guys that might be watching this video, when I'm searching for a chance to win that boat this coming spring, I'm going to be out there searching. I'm going to take my water lens, link down in the bio, and we're going to go out there and catch them.